In the last video on Hamilton graphs, I finished the video by asking you to solve three problems. So in this video I'd like to go over some solutions to these problems. And remember that a graph is Hamiltonian if it has a Hamilton cycle, which is a cycle that touches every vertex of the graph. So this first problem asks to show that the complete bipartite graph with partite sets of size m and n um, is Hamiltonian if and only if those two partite sets um, have the same size and have at least two vertices in each of the partite sets. So let's think about how we might do this. We'll start off with saying that KMN can have bipartition XY have bipartition X and Y where obviously the size of x is n and the size of y is m. All right, now we know that there is a Hamilton cycle. We're going this direction. We know that there is a Hamilton cycle in this graph and we want to show that n equals m. So what we should realize, well first of all we'll say that, um, let c be a Hamilton cycle. of k, m, n. Now, we should notice that any cycle, so each cycle in the complete bipartite graph, uh, so each bipartite graph has only cycles of even length, none of odd length. We have done this in previous videos. So we know that each cycle in this graph has even length. And thus, the cycle visits x and y an equally many times. This is not hard. Just think about it. You have your set x here and your set y here. Right now, we don't know that they're the same size, but that's what we're trying to show. So if you think about the cycle, any cycle in this graph, it's going to have to, if you want to say that it starts in x, then it'll move to y because only edges that exist in the graph go between x and y. And then you move back to set x and back to set y and back to set x and back to set y. But the only way to close it off is to go back to set x and you have an even length cycle and you've visited the same number of vertices here as you did over here. Well, what that means is that if our cycle C, which is a Hamilton cycle, um, and covers all of the vertices of the graph, and if it visits each of these an equal number of times, then it follows that, oops, then C visits X and Y equally many times. and touches or hits, I'm going to say is incident with all vertices. So then we know that the size of x is equal to the size of y. So now we've seen that the size of x equals the size of y and of course there are at least two in each part because otherwise you just have this graph. If there was only one in each part, then you cannot even have a cycle in the graph. It's too trivial. This graph is the path on two vertices or also the complete graph on two vertices, however you want to call it. It's too trivial to work out to have a Hamilton cycle. So we know that the sizes are equal, but of course each of the sizes has to be bigger than one. So that's why we have the sizes are equal and bigger than or equal to two. Now, for the other direction, it's really straightforward. If you know that you have a bipartite graph, complete bipartite graph, with partite sets of the same size, then all you do is you label the vertices down one side as maybe, let's say, x1 all the way down to xn, and you label the other side to be y1 all the way down to yn, 
And then it's very simple to find the Hamil ah, Hamilton cycle. For, in, for example, what you do is you just start at x1, you go to y1. Then you go to x2, which goes to y2. And of course, you can do this because it's the complete bipartite graph. So you know that every possible edge between x and y exists. And so then you just continue to do this until you end up at xn and then at yn, which brings you back to x1. So for the other direction of the proof, it's really just that easy. You can just lay down exactly what are the vertices in x and in y, and then describe the Hamilton cycle exactly. So now we've proven that the complete bipartite graph is Hamiltonian if and only if the partite sets have the same size and of course have at least two vertices in each partite set. So let's move on to the next question that I posed. And that is down here. Well, actually, both of them are written here. So <clears throat> the first of these is give a graph that has no Hamilton path. Now, really, I should be careful here and point out that I meant to say give a connected graph because clearly you could just say that your graph G is, here, maybe I'll use a different color for the solution. Let's go with green. Maybe you want to say your graph G is this graph right here, having two pieces. Now, of course, if there is a disconnect in your graph, if the graph is disconnected, then there's no Hamilton path, that's for sure, because you cannot get from this vertex over to here using any path in the graph. So more interestingly, let's look for a connected graph that has no Hamilton path. And there are lots of examples, so I'm just going to draw maybe a couple. One of the easiest ones that I can think of is, maybe I'll t choose a brighter color. Let's take red. So one really easy example would be <clears throat> something like this. Well, so far, we have a Hamilton path. Remember, a Hamilton path is simply a path in the graph that covers all of the vertices. So far, this graph is just a path. But if we tack on one more edge with a vertex right here, try to find a Hamilton path. Well, it's going to be really hard. Because, in fact, you can't. Because if you start at any one of these ed, uh, vertices and you move towards the center vertex, now you're stuck. Are you going to go straight up or continue on? If you go straight up, you can never get back down to this vertex. And similarly, if you continue on, you can never get back up to this vertex. And the same argument will will hold no matter where you start in this graph. So this one has no Hamilton path. No Hamilton path. Of course, you can make more complicated examples. Let's start off with something like a four cycle. OK, so so far, a four cycle has a Hamilton path. You can just start at any one of these vertices, go around part way through the cycle, and don't use up the last edge. So there, there is a Hamilton path. If we tack on an extra edge with a vertex out here, there is still a Hamilton path. You can just go in all the way around and stop. Maybe we tack on another one over here. And we can still do it. Of course, you can start here, go all the way around, and then back out to here. But if we tack on one more out here, now we cannot get a Hamilton path anymore. It's sort of similar to the argument that we looked at over here. You can see that these vertices, which have degree 1, are sort of problematic. We can immediately see that if we have um, two vertices, which have degree 1, then it's not yet a problem. But as soon as we have three or more vertices, which have degree 1, um, here we allowed for this vertex and this vertex to be the end vertices of the Hamilton path, but now this vertex can't be reached during the middle of the Hamilton path because it will have to have degree 2 at least, and it only has degree 1. So this graph also has no Hamilton path. But don't be fooled. Just because you have two vertices of degree 1 is not enough to give you a Hamilton path either. Let's try this example, actually a very similar example. We could just take this same 4 cycle and now tack on a vertex out here and another one out here. So this one has two vertices which are of degree 1, but you're not going to get a Hamilton path. Each of these vertices of degree 1 is going to have to be an end vertex of the path, otherwise you cannot reach them. And if you start at one of them, it doesn't matter which, because they're basically identical, 
and you move in towards the cycle, now what are you going to do? Well, if you move this direction, which is equivalent to moving that direction, you're going to be here, and then you're going to get to here, and now either if you use up this vertex, you will not be able to get out to that vertex, and if you go that way, you'll never get to that vertex. So maybe I'll just draw this in a different color so it's more easy to see. If you try to go something like this, you're going to get stuck, and you cannot complete a Hamilton path, and if you try anything else, it'll all work out the same way. No Hamilton path. So in a future video, I plan to talk a little bit about conjectures about Hamilton paths and cycles, and also to prove more theorems about what is known. But before we get to that, let's finish off with the last question. And this question was sort of um, inspired by the fact that if you have a Hamilton cycle, so let me just say you have some Hamilton cycle, starts at a vertex in the graph, moves through all the other vertices of the graph, then you can get a Hamilton path. You just look at the previous vertex like the in the Hamilton cycle and you can just cut off that edge and what you're left with is a Hamilton path. So the question is can a Hamilton path always be used to form a Hamilton cycle? And if you think about this for a little while you should see that it's obviously not going to be the case. In fact if you just take a path we've sort of seen this already Let's just take a look at the path on three vertices. Well, it has a Hamilton path, clearly, itself. It is a Hamilton path. But does it have a Hamilton cycle? Well, it has no cycle. So, of course, it has no Hamilton cycle. There is no edge that brings you back to here. So this is an example that has a Hamilton path, but, of course, it cannot be used to complete a Hamilton cycle. And it's not just graphs like this. You could make more complicated examples. So maybe let's try something like this, make a triangle, and then just tack on a vertex out here. So take a look at this one. Can you find a Hamilton path? Well, sure you can. If you go all the way around this outside, you've just made a Hamilton path. But can you make a Hamilton cycle? No, you cannot, because the only cycle in the graph uses up just three vertices and the fourth one is left out. So this is, uh, the answer to this question is no, you cannot do that, and here are a couple of examples why, and of course you can think of many different examples why, and I encourage you to do that.